Hello, and welcome to a tutorial for CSCI 2824, Discrete Structures. In the past few weeks, you've been going over propositions, compound propositions, propositional statements, and truth tables. Knight's Names problems are a really great way to cement all of these subjects in your mind. For this reason, we're going to go over an example Knight's Names problem now. Suppose we're given the following. There are two people, A and B. A says, at least one of us is a knave. B is silent. To go about solving this problem, we first want to make some propositional statements. In order to do that, we're going to actually have to make some propositional variables first. We can say, let P equal A is a knight. And let Q equal B is a knight. Using these variables, we can determine what A is saying. By saying at least one of us is a knave, this is actually the statement A or B is a knave. Because we set it up so that both P and Q are A is a knight and B is a knight, we're going to use not P or not Q for this statement. So A says not P or not Q. Our second step is going to be making a truth table. In order to do that, I first set up P and Q. I like to set up so that P is true, true, false, false, and Q is true, false, true, false. After that, you're going to want to set up the different parts of the propositional statement. So we've set up not P here and not Q here. Together, these will form not P or not Q. In order to solve a Knight's and Eighth problem, we're going to use the biconditional where we use what A said, and A is P, and we're going to compare it. Now, we're going to fill out the truth table. So, first, not P. We know that not is going to be the opposite, and so we get false, false, true, true. The same goes for not Q. So we get false, true, false, true. Now we look at not P or not Q. For or, we remember that only one has to be true in order for the entire statement to be true. Here we have false and false, so that's going to give us false. Now we have false and true, that will give us true. True and false will give us true, and true and true will give us true. Now, for the biconditional, we remember that this is true whenever, when it, whenever it is two trues or two falses. We also want to make sure that we're looking at P and the statement not P or not Q. So we pretty much have to ignore these three here. Here we see a true and a false. That gives us a false. Here we have a true and a true. That gives us a true. Here we have a false and a true. That will give us a false. And here we have a false and a true. That will also give us a false. You'll notice here that there's actually only one column or one row uh, that is a true for the biconditional statement, and that is this row here. In this row, we see that P is true and Q is false. We can go back up to the statements that we said above. If P is true, this means A is a knight. And if Q is false, this means that B is a knave. Now, in some of these knights and knave problems, you'll have examples where both A and B are saying something. Let's use the same problem, but suppose that B had also said A is a knave. The steps here look very similar. Again, we're going to make some propositional statements. We have P saying A is a knight, P being A is a knight, Q being B is a knight, and A saying not P or not Q. But what we also want to add in now is B says not P. So by saying A is a knave, B is saying P is not a knight. Now we go and we make a truth table. 
I've set the truth table just the same way we did just a couple seconds ago, and I filled it out fully. However, you're going to notice two extra rows here. This row is a Q if and only if not P. So this is essentially checking what B said. Here, I've just simplified it to be the and. So what we're actually going to be comparing there is P if and only if not P or not Q and Q if and only if not P. So let's solve the rest of the table here. Again, we're looking at Q if and only if not P. So we only want to be looking at Q and not P. We have a true and a false. That gives us a false. A false and a false, that gives us a true. True and true, that gives us true. And then false and true, that gives us false. Now we do the and operation. So we have a false and a false, that's gonna be false. We have a true and a true, that will be true. A false and a true, that's false. And a false and a false, which is false. Again, we notice that only one row is going to have a true for this and of the biconditionals. We'll find that this actually gives us the same result. So we see that A is a knight and B is a knave, which makes sense because we're working off of the same problem. So this was an example of how you can go over knights and knaves problem. Again, this is a really great way to cement your skills in propositional statements, compound propositions, and truth tables. So it's highly recommended that you do as many of these example problems as you can until you really feel comfortable with the subjects. Thanks so much for watching.